The purpose of the following presentation is to explain to managers of employees who will be exposed or potentially exposed to harmful vibrations. The presentation will take you through how to use ReactX equipment most effectively in order to manage your employees' exposure to hand arm vibration and to reduce that risk to as low as reasonably practical. Now, this presentation is termed part two, and this is because there is a presentation which really should be reviewed in advance of this material. As in part one, there's more of an explanation of why the management of hand arm vibration is important and the ways in which it should be approached in order to manage it effectively. This part two session is very much focused on how to use the ReactTech R-Link technology most effectively to manage your employees' exposure. So first of all, in overall terms, there are three key elements to the technology that ReactTech offer, some or all of which you have invested in to help your management of hand arm vibration and potentially proximity to danger. First of all, there's the wearable element referred to as our link watch, which is the device that the worker will place on their wrist to alert and inform them of their exposure levels and any proximity to danger. There is also a razor device, which is a communication hub which allows the data being gathered by devices such as the watch and other devices to be provided within the same day to ReactX hosted analytics. The hosted analytics is the third key element of the ecosystem for ReactTech. The system gives the controlled data available to multiple employees in a highly secure manner. And the data is gathered either by the razor or a gateway device. Either mechanism, the razor or the gateway allows the data to get gathered automatically without any intervention. So in terms of how the system works, now there should be posters available beside the equipment to remind the operators of these steps. But in summary, they sign out a device at the start of each working day and will be given an ID card, which identifies them to the system to allow them to do that. They collect the unit from what's called a charging station. There's a wrist strap into which they then insert the device in order to attach it snugly to their wrist. When they then go to use tools, if these have been fitted with tool tags, they press a button on the side of the watch once, then present the watch face up to that RFID tag on the tool. They will then hear a beep to confirm that they've actually connected to that tool. The razor device that was mentioned in the previous slide is assigned in a similar way. They may be given a razor device either so that you as a company are getting data collected from the watch and other devices during the working day, but also potentially to help them with loan worker protection as it does have those features as well. There's additional training information that will be supplied um, with the razor if it's used for loan worker protection. At the end of the working day, they return the watch back to the charging station. They don't need to return it to the same one they removed it from, and they don't need to return it to the same bay within that charging station. They simply return it. It is important through the course of the day though, that they do wear the watch on their wrist at all times. And I'll come back to that point in a later slide. Finally, once the watch is docked back into the charging station, the data is automatically transmitted to the analytics platform via a nearby gateway device. And information is then available to be reviewed and assessed. So as a company, you're able to choose and preset what information the operators see on the screen. In the centre of the device, it shows them either the time remaining for them to reach a certain exposure threshold or the number of exposure points that they have accumulated through the course of the working day. A T on the left hand side of the screen will indicate that the watch is collecting tool exposure points, and an S will indicate the collection of sensed exposure points. The 
the colored circle displays their threshold levels. So if they're below their action value, the green portion of the circle will be lit up. If they were to exceed their action value, the amber portion would then light up. And finally, if they were to breach the exposure limit value, the red portion would light up. Now, while their exposure is increasing, they will receive alerts from the watch. So it will both buzz and vibrate to alert them to the fact that their exposure level is at a dangerous level and the length of that alerting will increase with their exposure level. Finally, along the top of the display, they can view enabled watch functions. This will be set in advance depending on what the watch was purchased for and is able to do. They can also see the battery level indicator there. So some critical things to understand in terms of how the watch works. It senses vibration at all times. And by the nature of the vibration, it will decide that a tool is in use and start to count the trigger time of using that tool. If an operator fails to tag onto a tool after sign out, then the watch will display the sensed exposure points. And those points will also be recorded as tool exposure points, but there will be no tool identity. As soon as one tool is tagged onto, then the display will move to show a T representing that tool exposure points are being collected. Basically, the trigger time together with the last red vibration from a tool tag is what's used to calculate the tool exposure points. So again, if an operator forgets to tag on to the next tool, the points will be based on the last tool that the operator was tagged on to. If an operator you feel will be subject to vibrations off tool, but you don't consider that those vibrations to be a source of hand arm vibration system risk, then an off tag or an off button can be used to ensure that no TEP points are gathered. An off tag is simply a tag programmed to zero meters per second squared. Or to switch off a device, you press and hold the button for a period of time and then when it beeps, you press it again to recognize that you do want to switch off. So when the off button is used, TEP points are not gathered. However, it should be noted that even though a device is switched off for determining TEP points, the SEP points will still be detected and gathered as normal. Given that the watch's sense vibration will only be recorded if it's a vibration that meets the criterion of being harmful to someone, and therefore that's why SEP is never switched off. Fundamentally, there's a company-wide setting within the analytics, and that allows you to determine at all times what the operator sees on his screen, whether it be TEP or SEP points. And equally well, the data presented to normal report users will be one or the other. So that's a company-wide decision that you can take and Reactic re recommends that you do that after a period of understanding that the value you see in your SEP data and its suitability to the type of tools that you're using. The benefits of Reactic's live or SEP data or sensed vibration is to identify the variables that apply in real life that mean a tool's vibration level may differ from that which you would normally expect. So one of the biggest contributors to this is an operator's ability to use a tool properly. Now the information that's shown here is just from some information produced in the Control of Vibration at Work Regulations guidance. So that's the L140 document. And it basically lists some data from the use of a braking tool where an operator was leaning excessively into the tool and how by training, they were able to reduce this such that the impact on the likely risk the person was receiving meant that their ability to reach exposure action value in the use of the tool before training was 37 minutes. And that was extended to 100 minutes from that training, meaning that we were reducing the vibration level being experienced by the employee in limit value terms that was changed from only 150 minutes 
the 400. Now, the Razor device has an application which helps really get live and added value out of the set of data that's generated by the watch. So what the Razor device can do with what we call its training aid app is allow you to see in real time what vibration levels are being delivered by a tool and therefore the rate at which the points would be generated if that tool were to be continued to be used. So the screen will show you the tag value of the operator's tag tool before the training session. So according to the tag value, what points per hour should the tool generate to them versus what is the live detected vibration in points per hour that's been picked up by the watch and transmitted to the razor. And there's a little graphic to illustrate this in a manner so that you can actually see in a fairly live basis and give feedback immediately to the operator to advise them on how to change their technique. Now, there's a small training video available from React Tech to actually demonstrate this in operation, in which you'll see there's a little bit of a delay, but still it's adequately live to allow you to give on the spot training on best use of that tool. So moving on to the React Tech Analytics, which supports the system. As a reminder, the data that's gathered by the watch is transmitted to the analytics either by a Razor device live or a gateway device as and when the watch is within range. In the analytics, the data is secure, is backed up regularly, and it's instantly accessible in a very controlled manner. So this next section goes on to give detail on the hosted React Tech Analytics software and its capabilities. So the React Tech Analytics gives you automatic emails and alerts. Alerts in the case of events such as exposure threshold breaches. The alternative way of getting information automatically from the system is that it has a large number of informative reports. Each and every one of those can then be set up to automatically be sent to a specific individual or groups of individuals, depending on their responsibilities. And the frequency at which those reports are sent, again, is configurable to suit your business needs, whether that be weekly, monthly, quarterly, or even annually. So it's a host of different reports, which can give you a dashboard analysis of performance, down to a granular detail of the type of data in terms of informing who are your highest risk employees or what are the tools which are driving your highest risks, which allows you to then prioritize your activity in terms of reducing the risk to individuals and designing and managing your controls and interventions around that. The sort of data in terms of hand arm vibration allows you to look at alternative work methods, your equipment selection, even your maintenance and purchasing policies. You can also track the service records of your tools. Based on how the employee data is analysed, you can then look at how to change work schedules again with the view to reducing your risk. So to get started with the React Tech Analytics, there's a series of specific videos that can allow your administrators to become familiar with the detail of using the system. But just to, to give you an overview, fundamentally, React Tech will set up an initial administrator. They will receive a welcome email, and this is how we ensure strict GDPR compliance controls the, the access for the React Tech Analytics. That first administrator would then be responsible for setting up the chain of creation of users. And there are a number of different types of users available in the system. Enterprise administrator, administrator, group administrator, and report users. The following slide will show you what the data structure means in terms of the enterprise and group idea. And in addition, for any particular user named above, you can allow them to have access to SEP data or not. 
This is terminology which we refer to as smart users, but any one of these users above, you can choose whether or not they should have access to both TEP and SEP or just TEP data. So in terms of data structure within the Rectic Analytics, at the very top level, and really something that we would only recommend for particularly large organisations, we have what we call an enterprise level. And the enterprise level can then oversee a number of different companies. Within the company level, you can then further break your data down into regions and divisions to your ultimate smallest element, which is a data group. So referring to the previous page, an administrator can view and manage data for an entire company. A group administrator is responsible for analyzing and managing data only for specified groups. And a report user can view data only. And again, this can be set to be company-wide or for specified groups only. With the Razor Live data, you also receive information on the location that data was gathered, which allows you to see remotely from your employees exactly where they're deployed at any particular time, as well as their exposure levels. And finally, in terms of the analytics and its capabilities, as we've already mentioned, there are extended abilities to have automatic reporting of the data. What the system also gives you is an ability to record your actions that you've taken as a consequence of that data. So that might be in the way of control measures, which you can then track against your exposure performance, odd intervention logs and reports where you're simply taking a record of specific actions at a specific time because of particular information that you viewed. So in summary, I'd like to highlight the key benefits that we believe you will see from your investment in Reactex technology. First of all, we believe the technology will help you to meet your requirements under the regulations and the guidance from the HSE. But most importantly, we believe this will allow you to prioritise and be more effective in the development of the controls that you will need to reduce the risk to as low as reasonably practical and evidence that in a way that complies with the HSE. The data and the technology that we use will also be able to be used in the defence of civil lit litigation claims. There is precedence for it being used to that effect and in particular the fact that the data is robust and tamper-proof and auditable while also being compliant to GDPR requirements, again, can make such activities simple and easy to do. And finally, perhaps most importantly, we believe that by using our technology, it's turning assessments of risk into something that is personal rather than generic to tasks. And in this way, it will help you to be able to ensure that your individuals are not at any increased risk from developing a very debilitating disease in the way of hand arm vibration syndrome. And also in the work of the Razor device and the potential to bring additional health risk sensor data into a single environment allows you to think about consolidating all of your knowledge of your employees' risk when they go about their work. Thank you for your attention.